something to help those children uh, to improve in the future. Um, I call Maya Lubeck. It's a privilege to take the final call on this third reading of the Education, National Education and Learning Priorities Amendment Bill. Now, I, I am confused because it sounds to me like I must have been on a completely different select committee than some of the speakers on that side of the House, because what I heard from the submitters was not what they heard. Um, but before I go any further, I would like to commend the other side of the House on their colouring skills. We have seen from both Denise Lee and Nicola Willis a wonderfully coloured in bill with yellow and, and orange highlighting. I, I suggest uh, kindly that maybe instead of colouring the bills, they do some reading. And when they do reading of the bills instead of colouring, they might actually discover that there's a whole lot of good stuff in these bills. And, and I would like to talk a little bit about that today. Um, I did speak about the second reading of this bill and also the last time I spoke was uh, when my colleague Jen Tinetti was in the chair during committee stage when she was very eloquently answering some of the questions that were remaining on this bill, uh, on this member bill. But I think it's also important to point out that this is a member's bill and there seems to be a, a little bit more confusion from the other side of the House with regards to a member's bill versus a bill that the government brings to the House. This is a member's bill, not a government bill. And it's been done by someone, as has mentioned, um, has been on the call phase for, I've heard, three decades. Obviously, she started when she was 10 years old. <laughs> No, she, Jen Tinetti has done a great job shepherding, shepherding this bill through the House. Uh, she is a very passionate and staunch advocate for the education sector. As has been mentioned, we are tremendously proud of her. She is the very first of our wonderful class of 17 members of Parliament. And um, for her to bring this through all stages into law is just a really wonderful moment. So I'd like to take that moment to say congratulations to Jen Tinetti. Um, so, as we have heard, this bill requires the Minister to widely consult on the statement of national education and learning priorities. And um, so that I don't run out of time to speak about this bill, I will from now on refer to this particular bill as the NELP. Um, it puts children back to the centre of learning and it's giving them a say on the education that they deserve. And, and this is where I get confused. So the other side of the House has been saying to us, look, we've heard from submitters, you know, push this bill back. We, you know, you shouldn't be doing this yet. Well, actually, there was not one submitter that begged and pleaded with us to put this bill back. Uh, the, the, um, the PPTA made some, some suggestions that I'll come back to, but there was no pleading involved at all. And, and, and actually, when you consider the fact that the opposition is asking us to just, you know, put this on ice and, and wait for another 12 or 18 months to, to consider this again, they're basically saying that the voice of children and young people doesn't matter. They're basically saying, you know, forget about, about the input of young, young people, let's just forget about this bill and we'll come, we'll come back on this later. And, and, and that is really, really harsh because this bill, what this bill, um, clause four of this bill does, it changes the current situation from where it is, where the minister at the moment can consult with maybe some of the teachers or some of the parents as is, as is currently happening. But what we heard from our submitters, and 17 out of 20 submitters actually uh, supported this, they said that it's important that there's a much wider consultation requirement with stakeholders. So that's what this bill does. It sets out an extensive list of stakeholders the minister must consult with to get their views on the priorities of education. And, oh, I'm catching Mr. Um, uh, Simeon Brown's eye, so I, I, I will explain a little bit um, to you. So um, consulting, consulting widely in the bill means that when, you actually, when, when um, the member would have read the bill, he would see that the bill actually says consulting widely, including... And then the bill lists about 11 stakeholders in that process, including doesn't mean it's an exhaustive, um, um, an exhaustive list. And in fact, parents are already consulted with now. So I think there has been some misunderstanding, uh, unfortunately, by that member on this bill. Um, one of the other bodies that, that presented uh, on this particular bill was the IHC. And they uh, made it very clear that in their submission, they believed that this bill needed to comply with the United Nations Conventions on the Right of Persons with Disability. So they particularly requested us that any statement is developed in consultation with 
and actively involves persons with disability, including children with disabilities, through their respective organisations. So in, as a result of that feedback in particular, uh, this um, line was inserted to consult with national bodies representing the interests of the disability community. And that is just one example of why it is so important that we add stakeholders in the process of this consultation. Uh, as I said again, it was important to the majority of the submitters to this bill. We had uh, 17 out of 20 um, supporters, uh, and in particular, as has been mentioned already, the Office of the Children's Commissioner and Judge Andrew Beecroft. He, uh, he, he, he outlined very clearly to us that it's so important to get the voices of the children and the young people heard to ensure that in the process of the NELP they get all of the opportunities to reach their full potential. Um, also, the National Council of Women, Te Kauihera o Wahine o Aotearoa, told us that members have often expressed their support for better consultation, and they had expressed their uh, disappointment at the lack of um, authentic consultation. And that is in line uh, with what other members have touched on already, the fact that when this NELP was first brought um, uh, into law, Comments of inadequate consultation were disregarded by the previous um, government and uh, the then Education and Science Select Committee um, had been told that the richness of the New Zealand curriculum was being undermined and, and people weren't being consulted on it. And I'll, I'll come back to that a bit later. Now, coming back to that um, uh, PPTA, um, both um, Simeon Brown and Nikki Kay mentioned that um, uh, they had asked us to um, defer this legislation. Well, it wasn't as dramatic as that at all. The PPTA, in fact, completely supported this legislation. What they actually said is they had a view, and this is verbatim, they had a view that the bill could be delayed, so nothing so much dramatic, because they were talking, of course, about the significant review and the national conversations that are currently taking place. Um, in fact, the Children's Commissioner, and this is what the members on the other side on our select committee obviously have missed in that process, but the Children's Commissioner responded to that particular question that was put to them by the opposition, and the Children's Commissioner said that he would proceed with the bill because the wording is wide enough to accommodate any changes. And also, looking at what the officials recommended, they said we shouldn't delay the commencements because they believe the first NELP can be developed to inform new planning and reporting processes, taking into account the additional consultation requirements in the bill. So on all accounts, everybody was agreeing that we should continue with this bill. Um, now, we have uh, several times heard the opposition say that uh, this bill has been slashed, it, it, um, it does nothing, there's nothing left. Um, it doesn't really, it's just tinkering around the edges. And, and one has to really question the fact that they are opposing a bill that they believe um, isn't really making much change. It, it really, to me, it shows that they're very confused, and, and Jen Tanetti already um, spoke about it before, um, that um, when they first introduced the NELP, they left a whole heap of gaps in that consultation process that we are tidying up in this bill. This bill is, in fact, fixing the errors from the opposition. So what I would like to, to, to put to you, uh, Mr. Speaker, that this uh, opposition, by their stance and by voting down this bill, is not supporting uh, the children's voices. They, they're letting children down, uh, because it is the children, of course, that would benefit from this particular le legislation. And it seems really strange to me that, that in a process that you're making decisions around education where it's all about children, the National Party doesn't want these children to have a voice in the decisions. It, it, it mystifies me, absolutely. Um, so, <clears throat> so I just need to... <clears throat> so, um, I'd like to add that um, what we're doing with this bill and in, in giving the children a voice in the process is, is absolutely in line with this government's commitment to improving the well-being of New Zealanders and their families. It is also consistent with the words of our brilliant leader, Jacinda Ardern, to make New Zealand the best place in the world to be a child. Obviously, the op opposition is not agreeing with that. The uh, bill is also in line with the overdue investments into education, completely consistent with the government's positive plan. Lastly, I have to admit I did also use my highlighter for a message to the opposition, and that is cheer up. <laughs> a 
at the end of it, I would like to say I commend this bill to the House. It's wonderful legislation. Thank you, Gentinetti. Thank you to the Select Committee, the Minister, and everybody involved with this legislation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those